it's on, yes. Okay, guys. Thanks for, thanks for not leaving the event. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the spring rolls. And I am personally very excited to announce the next speaker, Huang Xiao. So I met Huang during a another meetup like a year ago. And so I didn't know a lot about him. I know he's a PhD student at the director doing IT security. So that's not my field. I'm doing machine learning, some kind of stuff. And he said, yeah, David, actually, I'm, I'm, in, I'm doing machine learning. I'm not IT security. So how can it be that shit? So what is the connection? And then he told me about adversarial machine learning, which is the study of how to trick machine learning algorithm into recognizing something which is not there. So I thought it's very interesting. I wanted to, because it's, I think, a very recent research field. And I'm very excited to announce him to tell us something about positive adversarial learning. Well, OK. Well, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for an uh, interesting introduction of me. My name is Huang. Um, I am working on diverse diversity of machine learning topics in the chair of IT security. So, uh, um, so uh, our topic today is about the deep learning. So, uh, it's pretty pretty uh, fancy name, huh? Um, you know what? Uh, what? If it was like three or four years ago, then probably this uh, this room would be empty already. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, at that moment, if someone told you, okay, I am uh, using uh, the, uh, net neural network to do uh, image classification, then probably you would respond like, okay, well, that's cool, but uh, what else new, right? So, uh, so is it a deep learning really, really uh, that fancy? Uh, we don't know. Uh, that's what I'm currently working on, is, which is called adversarial learning. Um, the full name of the machine learning. So it's uh, sort of like re uh, reverse, reverse engineering of machine learning, uh, different kinds of algorithms. Um, so uh, I have been uh, working on uh, several different topics of machine learning. So today you're not expecting, uh, you're not expecting uh, um, some, uh, some very uh, good topics on, on deep learning itself, but uh, probably you will take home some messages about the uh, general, general foundation of machine learning and how is, this, um, how is it correlated um, from a theoretical, uh, theoretical, theoretical uh, views or perspective, how it is correlated to current this hot topic. Um, so uh, let's uh, start from uh, start from a topic related to today's theme, is which is called uh, deep networks. Um, so uh, a recent uh, research, uh, which was published in this year's CVPR, it's pretty uh, pretty interesting work. Is um, this authors has successfully uh, tricked the deep network, uh, which they used AlexNets, AlexNet, and then they successfully tricked the uh, classified to classify some pictures, which is totally, uh, which is probably very totally different uh, classified um, pictures into correct uh, classes. So if you look at the uh, pictures I put here. Um, the baseball, the baseball simply uh, have some rings. Um, those uh, discriminative uh, features of a baseball will be classified as a real baseball, even though you can see, okay, this picture, uh, well, this is obviously not a ball. Uh, so uh, the same situation happens to uh, to other pictures for the flames, uh, the flames, and uh, those uh, wa uh, water waves or those grays, they will be classified as real pictures, as uh, maybe out of your expectation. And that's what uh, deep networks for us right now we found. And <clears throat> so this is not one of the unique works. There uh, was, before there was another work uh, which can uh, change, some no um, change some pictures um, without uh, notification, without, uh, without observing the differences by human. You can put it into the already chained uh, deep network and somehow you were, the, the classifier will tell you, okay, this is not the picture uh, it, as it is looks like. So uh, summary is the deep network uh, can be easily fooled, and uh, the algorithm maybe we can talk about later. So it's uh, uh, another to another um, example is um, um, it's. Uh, Sort of a co uh, uh, joint uh, re uh, joint research area uh, between IT security and the deep network uh, or machine learning in general. 
is the, for example, the uh, spam filter. The spam filter, uh, I think you have used it intensively every day. Uh, if you have Gmail account, you have, if you have Microsoft or other, um, uh, other mail clients, uh, you will notice that you have a bunch of spam classified in, 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 in your uh, spam boxes. But uh, sometimes, are they really spams or um, uh, are there some normal legitimate mails has, have been classified as spams? And that's not what you, that's not what you want. So, um, so another thing uh, I want to bring up is about the deep, net, uh, deep learning. So uh, in a word is, uh, you probably, uh, you probably um, been arou arousing by the talks before uh, is the uh, flow net is pretty fancy technique. You can somehow detect those things. But in real applications, for example, deep, uh, deep rain in Google, and also the face network, the face, uh, the face net in Facebook. Do you know how many, uh, how many uh, powerful machines they need to train such a powerful predictive uh, deep, deep, deep network? So learning is very expensive. Not it's not every everybody's uh, everybody's application on laptop. So this is not what you can do. Um, sure, you can do some uh, toy samples for experiments, uh, for uh, for a study, for a little projects. That's that would be fine. But uh, what I will uh, what I will look uh, expect is um, someday someday um, this this kind of uh, techniques will not be uh, tailored to every individual. But uh, this AI, the artificial intelligence, will be provided as a services. So in short cards, it's uh, AI as a services. So um, this thing is machine learning or data mining or artificial intelligence has been coded, coded, coded into standards, different standards. But not everyone needs to code them by themselves. Not everyone needs to have their own project team for machine learning or big data analyst team to develop their own products. So most of the time, they will, uh, they will prefer to use the service provided, for example, by Google uh, Predictive API or provided by I IBM, Watson, and those kind of a platform. So uh, that's what uh, uh, puts us into the age of the threats. All right, then. Um, the uh, reverse of learning, so like I said, it's reverse engineering of machine learning and aims to design the robust and secure learning algorithms. So I come today as a master, so, so um, I am come today as an attacker, as a malicious guy. So if you, have, uh, if you have a project, you have a project to predict something, you want to have a, a very good classifier, then you have to put into thought is there are a, a number of malicious adversaries out there. They are looking at, uh, they are looking at a, a services, they are looking at a data, they are looking at, uh, they are trying to uh, uh, support your uh, classifiers. So uh, that's what uh, we are research on. So the big picture, um, where the machine learning is, um, it's very well uh, defined uh, research area, uh, I would say. Um, uh, well, as a couple of years ago, I have a, a big argue, argument with, uh, with my colleague is about the uh, machine learning's boundary. What is machine learning's boundary? So at that moment, I was heavily involved in the project for uh, Bayesian Networks include uh, Bayesian networks for causality discovery. So um, I, um, I say, okay, uh, the uh, causality discovery should be counted into machine learning, but uh, the truth is machine learning, um, there is clear boundary for machine learning is not like that. So machine learning has to focus on data, has focus on data and has to focus on prediction. So. Um, so if you have uh, um, if you have a look at it, you have a look at the machine learning in this way, then probably you will come up with a diagram or the flow chart of diagram. It's very high level of abstraction of how you train how you train a machine learning model. For example, so you have a training data sets, which uh, by now, uh, uh, for example, for a deep network, you usually have a gigabytes, terabytes of uh, data sets for uh, for training. And then you got a model, and this model um, will be um, updated. The parameters will be tuned um, with respect to a separate validation set. Uh, so this is a very, very high level and abstract learning process we have. And uh, 
so if I am uh, an adversary right now, uh, if I am uh, trying to uh, subvert a spam filter to make it worse, to make the, to make the uh, spam filter unfunctional, then what um, I, will f I will probably look at into two uh, process. The first of the process, is, uh, which is training process, training step. The training step, um, uh, we have defined a tag here, is uh, we want to change the training process. We want to uh, uh, we want to have a different classifier after your training. Um, this is what we call causative uh, attack, and and uh, and it's also uh, what I'm going to stress on uh, for today's talk. So another one is probably more practical, is uh, which we call the exploratory attack, which uh, focus on a test this, uh Test a, uh, test a step. Um, for test a step, if you uh, have a, have a target, so let's take the flowchart as example. If I have uh, movie clips, I want to this, I want this movie um, a clips to be classified as different kind of uh, um, optical flow. Then probably you can uh, 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 stick to this part. So the exploratory attack will not change the model. So the causative attack will change the model uh, alternatively. So that's the differences. And uh, so uh, um, I have been uh, uh, questioned several times in different communities. Uh, is it realistic to have this kind of scenario? Is it attackers uh, by now, is the attackers today are uh, really so skillful? Uh, attackers are so familiar with machine learning such that they can uh, support your uh, learning processes. So the answer is, um, so for the moment, for my research, most of the time I'm, I am working in a worst case study. So what is called worst case study is we assume that the attacker already have a full knowledge, already have the perfect knowledge of, of your data, perfect knowledge of, of your uh, uh, the features of the, uh, features you have, and also have a perfect knowledge of the uh, classifier you're using. And but in real but in real world and well, uh, real world attacks are limited, are quite limited to be honest. So first of all, uh, the access to the data, the access to the data. So. Um, in traditional information security, of course, you can you can hack it into the server, you can hack in the back end to steal the data, but that's kind of out of a out of a scope of uh, adversarial machine learning. So, um, adversarial machine learning here, uh, if we, uh, we uh, when we talking about the access to the data, we actually are talking about the access to the data distribution. Uh, the truth is, if you can uh, sample. Uh, data uh, data sets from the same distribution. Somehow you can recover um, recover the same uh, learning capability, exactly as uh, exactly the same as the server do. So um, so in real uh, applications, um, you can assume that attackers have have the ability to 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 obtain to obtain the data from the same distribution. So for example, uh, for the ImageNet. So this data sets it's uh, public available. You can download, I can download, everybody can download it. The attackers can also download it. So this kind of data has uh, you know a many many of the, the, the for example the AlexNet, a CafeNet, they are they are chained on this uh, on chain on this public data. So you should never uh, expect uh, that uh, you should never expect that, that that the attackers has limited access to those public data. Uh, so this is the first point. So the second point is the knowledge about features. Um, sure, uh, you will never know how uh, how the uh, developers on the server side how they engineer the features. Sure, you will never know, and the adversary they will also not know. But recent research ha has been um, founded. For example, the Deep Network. You don't actually design the features anymore. So uh, if you feed the data into the Deep Network, the features has self learn by themselves. So that's the uh, uh, one of the uh, dangerous points of the deep that we're bringing in, uh, in our life. And uh, even, even though uh, people uh, hand crafted those features and you should never expect that people will never know how you design them because for a lot of uh, data sets, for example, the image or voices, um, there are a bunch of uh, standard ways to, uh, to design those features, to uh, select those features, even feature extractions. So um, in this term, you should 
ex also expect the attacker had sort of a level of uh, ability, capability to, to get the information of, uh, of the features. So for the last column, the, um, the knowledge of a classifier, it's even worse. It's even worse, why? Because, um, like I said before, uh, now uh, we have uh, like 150 people here who are doing machine learning. So one, of the, one, one, one day you probably will go to the companies and um, go to some of the core technique machine learning uh, companies to, to design the services, and then you deliver the services to, uh, to uh, the, the partners in the industry, uh, deliver the uh, uh, techniques to, uh, to different clients. So to be honest, you probably, maybe today's, the audience will, uh, in the end, will all use deep networks. So, so in this term, I can say, okay, I know what you're doing. You are using deep networks to classify images or voices or texts. So this is a big flaw. Attacker, do know what you're doing right out there. And uh, uh, another thing is, um, Probably even worse, uh, if you look at the uh, things uh, on the bottom. Now, uh, in the website, uh, social networks, you can upload, you can download, you can also give the comments, you can, um, you can also uh, classify or image, okay, say, oh, this is a spam. So all these are real inputs from users. So if the user is a adversarial, if the user is a malicious guy, you know, haters, it's gonna hate her. He is gonna hate everything. I just, you know, there are, there are a bunch of guys out there, so you have to take that into account. They were um, simply sent a bunch of rubbish, a bunch of uh, uh, totally uh, counterintuitive, counterintuitive information back to you. And then you, if you accidentally leverage those information to learn a classifier, or uh, other learning algorithm, then you are, you are put in danger. All right, that's uh, uh, sort of the concept of adversarial learning. Mm -hmm. So um, let's uh, look at some basics about machine learning. Uh, image, we have, our, um, uh, we have a set of our observations. The blue points are the uh, observations. And the rear uh, signals are the green uh, signal. Uh, uh, it's a science function. And now what we want to learn is we want to use um, a polynomial function to uh, do the curve fitting. So that's it. You, you see, at the bottom we have designed, uh, designed a variable, a variable lens uh, polynomial functions with different number of coefficients. And uh, now this, uh, for very simple solution is you probably will you apply the least square, uh, which means you are minimizing empiric uh, squared error between the real observation and your estimated uh, output from your uh, polynom polynomial functions. And for that, you have to first of all, we have to define, okay, how many exp exponents, exponents, exponents I have in a function. If you use a, if you use a um, line, for example, on the top, uh, on the top left, if you use, simply use a line, it's a line about y equals uh, something, then you will get this red line on the top, on the top left. If you use another line which, uh, have, a, have, the, which have the slope some, somewhere, then you can get this line. And all these things are uh, doing one thing, is to minimize empiric errors between the red line and the blue points. So uh, there is a, um, there is a, uh, another, another thing is um, on the right bottom, you can see uh, if I increase the expo exponents to nine, that you're using nine polynomial function to fit only 10 points maybe, then that's what you will get. And in machine learning, we call that overfitting. Overfitting, overfitting means you are using a way much complex function to fit on the data, which may be dominated by noises. And uh, the overfitting is actually the central problem every machine learning researcher are working on, is to overcome overfitting, but of course, you have to be aware, not be uh, uh, underfitting. And so let's look at another example. Is um, we, um, on the on top left, we have the overfitting scenario. And uh, on the left side, we have a different uh, we have a different complexity of the functions. You can see that when you increase the complexity of the polynomial functions, d 
the tester errors were, were somehow first of all minimized and then will go up, go up, and then at that point where, uh, is what we are talking about overfitting. And so let's do another experiment. So uh, we add more data points. In the same uh, polynomial function, we add more like a 15, or, uh, 15 points or even more, like 100, 100, uh, 100 blue points. Um, but we're still using the same polynomial functions. We're still using a very complex functions. And then suddenly you, uh, you realized, okay, well, uh, the, the, um, the red line is getting more and more smoother and smoother. You know, that's, um, that give, uh, gives us uh, very good information is uh, if you want to get a, get a read of uh, overfitting, probably the first thing comes into mind is to, uh, you have to get more data. And there are other solutions to uh, overfitting. Uh, for example, regularization is a very well mature technique to, uh, to fight against the overfitting. And also you can add a prior uh, to your distribution. And then um, you probably can also apply the model selection using cross-validation. And then in this way you can also select a very good optimal model to uh, avoid the, the function to get too complex. So uh, a few a few words more. Uh, uh, for each for every model, uh, including deep uh, deep networks, neural network support like machine, for every learning model, there is a bias variance decomposition. So these two terms combines encodes the uh, empirical error, uh, encodes the generalization error of your of your learning model. So. Um, there is some trade-off between the bias and the variance. Maybe I will explain a little bit more about bias and the variance. So uh, imagine you are imagine you're, you're doing a very, uh, very uh, cool game or, or dot flitting game. So you have a target, then you, you want to throw the dart uh, through the ta target. And you, for, for example, you, if you have a very steady hand, then most of the time you are um, throw to very uh, close uh, position, which uh, uh, if I can see, for example, here, um, well, here, the red point is your target, but most of the time your um, your uh, sort of darts here. Then what we call is this is a, this is if this is a learning model, then which means you have a very high variance. Uh, sorry, uh, you have very high bias, but your variance is very slow because every time you are spotting the same places. So on the other hand, if you look at this one. Well, uh, now I am uh, I am uh, targeting. I am doing all my target tar my targets, but uh, every time my, 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 my hands are shaking. So uh, probably I will get uh, uh, give ten or two twenty uh, blue points like this, which uh, means my performance is not steady. My performance is not so stable uh, for the future unseen data. So uh, let's. Uh, put it onto uh, machine learning is uh, if you have a, a scenario of overfitting, that means uh, you are doing it very well on the training data, but uh, you are uh, rather doing the very poor on the tested data set. And, and this is what we call it, uh, we call it, um, variance is high, because if you uh, do 100, 100 experiments, 100 the same experiments, it's the same experiments, but uh, for each time, you have to sample 100 points from the same distribution, and then those uh, 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 red lines is what you what you get. You see, um, every time you will get a quite different shape of the functions because you are overfitting, because you're, because the functions are too com uh, too complex, because you have a very high variance for the future prediction, and this is the central problem of machine learning. Remember, this is a central problem uh, central problem of machine learning. So. Um, this is central problem. Uh, uh, machine learning is also uh, the central interest of uh, um, adversaries' objective. So what my research is doing is, uh, if I am playing uh, playing a game, an arm race game, and I am a, a attacker, and then there are some a defender. Defender, uh, what I refer to, uh, for example, is classifier, spam, uh, spam filter, or the uh, image classifier. Those are the defenders. They are trying to deliver uh, reliable uh, predictive services to clients. And, uh, and now uh, I am uh, adversarial. 
I am uh, trying to uh, damage your system to get some personal uh, interest, some personal profits. So what we will do, and the truth is, um, I can do both. If you consider the um, consider the generalization error as a bias and variance decomposition, you may you may think of okay, I can focus on either the bias or uh, focus on the variance, but. Uh, Obviously, if you focus on a bias, that means your training error is high. Then this is not cool, because the classifier will find out right away, immediately, okay, uh, my training error is wrong. My training error is so high, then probably I should change another classifier. So most of the research currently has been done uh, or focus on overriance. So we want to add some noises, we want to subvert your learning process such that you will not perform so well on the uh, in the future on the test data set. Um, so we already talked about it before, uh, we have a causative uh, attack and exploratory attack, just a few words more. And the poisoning uh, is what we are uh, referring to is causative attack. The causative attack is we, we now want to understand we want to discover, investigate how a machine learning algorithm, how it works. And then we, we can engineering either on features or uh, on the labels of the training sets. And then we are poisoning your training sets. And then if you have, haven't yet noticed, then you, you, you accidentally changed on this tainted content points in the data set, then you will change your discriminative uh, function. That is what uh, poisoning does. And for uh, the other part is uh, a exploratory attack uh, or uh, referred to evasion because now you're engineering a specific test sample on some features. It's a specific test sample. You want to this test sample classified as you wish. And this is exploratory attack. In this case, you have to explore the uh, classification boundaries of the classifier in the system, which is totally unknown to you, maybe. And then, um, and then you uh, engineer a very uh, carefully well-crafted data, data, and then circumvent the legitimate detection. So uh, this attack will change the discriminative uh, results of a specific data set, but will not change the uh, learning model itself. So this uh, impact of evasion attack is somehow is uh, limited. Now uh, today we're uh, introducing the causative attack. And, uh, so for the following uh, content, I will uh, uh, introduce some of the previous work uh, um, on how to poisoning and classify. Because by now, I think uh, maybe uh, you probably would be more interested in how, how this is actually happens in real research applications. Now we have, uh, for example, we have uh, SVM. SVM support back machine is, which is one of the, still, uh, still one of the uh, state of the art classifiers. And uh, probably you will argue, okay, deep learning can beat uh, SVM in uh, almost every area. area. But the truth is, um, um, SVM is, has very solid uh, theory foundation, and uh, researchers in, uh, from the statistical learning theory, or computational th learning theory, they are trying their, trying their really, uh, trying really hard to, uh, to increase the power, increase the performance of SVM. So now, uh, if you're interested, you can check out the uh, larger scale uh, kernel approximation. They're doing it quite well, uh, or most, uh, approaching the best performance of deep networks. So in this crazy academia work, you know, 0.2% of uh, accuracy increase will publish a very good quality conference paper. And this is what we are doing. And we have uh, now is binary cases, uh, positive labels, negative labels. What we want to what we want to do is now, for, suppose, assume I have uh, I have uh, some partially have the access to the data sets. I can I can flip the labels. I can flip flip the labels in your training data. So um, so uh, don't don't care how, how I can do that. Just as, just the imagination or so assumption is, I have I have to spend something. Uh, there is a cost of budget on how many labels I, I how many labels I can flip in the training data itself. 
And then uh, the objective of uh, reversal learning, uh, uh, reversal in this scenario is I want to maximize the error, maximize the error on the validation set. The validation set could be from uh, could be uh, could be that you stolen from the server or uh, the data set you collected from the same distribution. And uh, uh, we have uh, different kinds of uh, uh, methods doing it. And the basic theory behind it is uh, now we're measuring the error on, on, on a separate validation set using the function. The function is as we am right now. The function was chained on this poison chaining set. So remember, the chaining set has been poisoned by flipping some labels. And uh, the defender, the classifier, has totally no idea what has been changed. Totally no idea my system already under, under the threat of uh, those adversaries. So a uh, defender will chain it using, our, uh, using the classic way, just like a common, but uh, the adversarial will somehow maximize the, uh, will measure the error on a validation set, and then the attacker will uh, optimize the objective function and find out uh, which labels I should flip so that, uh, such that I can, I can make your classifier uh, works like a random guess. That's what we do here, at the theory behind. And so uh, on the left hand side, on the left hand side is the uh, SVM classifier without any attack here. And this is a, a classification boundary after the attack, after the label attack. And uh, we use the uh, maximum, uh, we, we use the optimization attack, uh, technique to find out which labels, which labels we, 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 we can flip. It looks like this. So uh, here is some results. Uh, we have now uh, two uh, data sets. The first, is the first two lines are uh, linear data sets, and the second two lines are the uh, polynomial data sets. Uh, on, the, on, the right on the left most, uh, uh, left -most uh, column is what you see is the original data distribution in 2D dimension. So, uh, so the second column, the second column is just, uh, okay, uh, you apply the SVM, on these data sets, the SVM will tell you, oh, uh, this is your classification boundary. Um, for each data set, we have uh, both linear kernel, we have uh, also the RBF kernel. Now, uh, for the rest, of the rest our dotted line uh, enclosed the area is a different, different attack strategy, different uh, uh, optimization algorithm we apply on this uh, data set is uh, the, market, the, mark, the marked points, the blue one and the red one are the labels we, we have flipped after the attacking. So you see, uh, we have actually very, very, uh, very good results here is by flipping like, uh, uh, let's say, by flipping like 10%, uh, less than 10% points, you will uh, totally change your uh, classification boundary like this. And this is, uh, this is uh, uh, what we have learned is SVM is not that secure enough. So if you have happened to have access to, to the data sets and then you know how to flip the labels, then the SVM will work like a random guess. All right, this is one example of flipping labels on SVM. Um, the, second, uh, the second example is also on SVM, but now we're not focused on the labels, we're uh, focused on the features. So we're doing something bad on features. We're doing something bad on, on, on the data set, it's, uh, on data set features. So uh, what we do is add some noises on the features such that this, uh, if we inject uh, inject this malicious point into your uh, chaining data and let the defender to chain on these points and data sets, then your classifier will also be uh, supported or degenerated. And in here we use the gradient ascent technique to find this point. So how, uh, how to find a point is, now we have uh, using uh, uh, sort of the same, the similar objective function is we measure the sum, the uh, aggregate, aggregate of the uh, empirical uh, hinge loss, 
and sum them up. And then now the adversarial trying to maximize this the sum of a hinge loss, and then find uh, exactly the uh, position of the axis C of that malicious uh, point. So where is the malicious point? I should inject into your training set such that the SVM will not work. Well, uh, this is a short example. We have uh, original uh, SVM, linear, linear SVM to separate those, uh, separate those uh, uh, data samples. We have uh, roughly 2.2 uh, uh, classification error. So after you uh, inject a malicious point here, and then uh, you, can, uh, you can actually notice the hyperplane has been changed. And then in this case, we have uh, almost 4% classification error. So like I, like I said, we can publish 10 papers out of it. Yeah. Well, um, so uh, the, um, the poisoning attack on SVM uh, in 2D demonstration is looking like this. So if this is what actually we uh, worked on uh, during the experimental uh, phases, uh, we generate a synthetic 2D, uh, 2D data samples and we keep, it about, we keep the boxes on, on the training data because if you are attack a system, you, you obviously won't let the data, data go in too far away because that will be detec detected by the defender right away. This is, this is way much an outlier. So that's why uh, we have to put a boundary, put a constraints on, uh, on the flexibility of the malicious point where you can go. And so, um, we uh, measure the uh, classification error on each point on the each point each point each data point of this uh, of these two D boxes, and and this color this co uh, this colorful uh, counter faces surfaces is what we get is what which you call the surface error surfaces. This error surfaces actually can uh, really tell you okay the red point the red corner on the right bottom are a quite, da quite dangerous area. Please keep your data away from this area. This is quite dangerous. If you, put, if you inject a malicious point in that area, then your, your SVM were defunctional. Again, uh, this, is a, um, this is a real uh, demo results uh, for two kernels. First is the linear kernel, and second is the uh, RBF kernel. So the same thing. So we first have the arrow, arrow uh, surfaces. This is, uh, this is simply injected points and then rechain and uh, we get a classification arrow. And that's what, uh, that is the arrow surfaces. And then we evaluated our gradient ascent technique. So we randomly pick a point on, on, on boxes and then let this point follow the gradient pass. And then the point will find exactly, exactly at the optimal position the optimal adversarial position, which you should inject into data sets to uh, support your classification. So uh, the uh, theory has proved that uh, um, we have reached the correct point, correct spot is um, the point will somehow go into uh, maybe local minimal, but not the global minimal. We go to the places and we'll tell you, okay, this is what you can do. And then we apply, uh, we apply this attacking uh, technique on the uh, Minister uh, Digital Images. So uh, we have now a design scenario, it's a classific binary, binary classification for uh, to telling apart nine digits from the eight digits. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, now inject, uh, we now inject an uh, image of nine um, by uh, putting some noises on, on images. And uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this has been discovered by the gradient ascent attack. And uh, you can see, okay, this nine uh, pictures have been changed to mimic the way of uh, the eight, how uh, eight looks like. And uh, indeed, if you inject this, um, this blurred version of nine into <laughs> training data sets, then you suddenly found your classification error has been increased significantly. All right, that's the example for uh, support back machine. Uh, we have talked enough about support back machine. So uh, what about the other thing? What about the other learning, mo uh, learning model, machine learning? And, and then we tried out the, uh, uh, we tried out a feature selection, embedded feature selection uh, domain. Uh, maybe you have heard of the lasso. 
Maybe you have also heard of the region regression or electric network. So the lasso is uh, one of the uh, most uh, popular feature selection algorithms currently uh, very well developed. They are using the L1 localization. And uh, the feature selection is uh, usually the, uh, the very first step, the very first step for many learning systems, especially for a uh, large, uh, large size of a feature, uh, for the bio bioinformatics and text mining uh, voices, they have a very huge uh, number of feature size. So the first, uh, first of the lessons you do is to reduce the feature numbers, to reduce, those, uh, reduce the irrelevant features from a data set. And here is where the lasso plays. And our, 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 uh, our first idea is, okay, then uh, if everything is wrong at the first place, then that's gonna be a disaster for the following. We again uh, apply this gradient-based methods to maximize the, uh, the, maximize the error. So uh, just some uh, quick, uh, quick view of, about lasso. The lasso, uh, lasso was like a rope. You're so, you throw the rope out and grab the cows or grab the horses if you want. And in this scenario, we're describing, describing the techniques that you're throwing a lasso and you grab those relevant features out of your data set. And this is, uh, um, this is an old technique and very well studied. And if you look at a geometric view, and you probably will find out, okay, uh, if you have a quadratic loss function here, this is a quadratic loss function, which is uh, the objective function you might want to minimize. And then you put some constraints. This constraints, look, is a box of constraints is L1 constraints, and this is L2 constraints. So. Uh, during uh, your optimization, uh, uh, your uh, quadratic uh, counter will hit this point, exactly this point. So this point means that uh, one of the coordinates system, one of the, uh, um, one of the coordinate has been zero. Um, if you have uh, two features here, then the x will be uh, shrinked to zero. That's the uh, um, you know intrinsic intrinsic uh, intrinsic um, magic um, of the lasso for feature selection. So uh, uh, if you uh, if you have ten uh, ten features and you apply the lasso and you get the uh, coefficients for uh, the weight the weight values for different features, so uh, lasso will select all those high high ranked uh, features and get rid of the rest. Get rid of the get rid of the sorry. Get rid of the uh, zero valued uh, features. So uh, if we can somehow add a malicious point into well, yeah, if we can add a malicious point into your training set and somehow sub, uh, totally change the ranking, the feature ranking, then you will select the rest of the five totally useless features in your uh, learning system. Then. Of course, for the following learning, for following learning paths, it's also useless. So uh, this is intuition uh, behind it. And uh, so at first place, we add some random noises, add some random noises to uh, the uh, lasso. And we found out the, uh, the feature values has been as uh, relevant a lot, has been uh, oscillated, uh, oscillated in their feature, feature space a lot. That means even, even you add some, uh, add some random noises in your uh, lasso, then your lasso will not work like uh, as you expected. So what if, we, uh, um, what if we add some malicious points, malicious points in your lasso model? And uh, we want to investigate the robustness of uh, your feature selection, and we want to design uh, some uh, design a multiple point attack methods based on the gradient ascent attack we have to already mentioned. It. So uh, this is object function, uh, which is uh, kind of uh, different, uh, slightly different as uh, what we've seen previously. And is we are now uh, not maximizing the error on the separate validation set, but we're maximizing the whole general generalization uh, error, which is the object function itself. So um, 
we believe in this way you are not only uh, you are not not only increase the variance but we are also increase the bias. And uh, it turns out um, applying the gradient ascent technique, uh, we're not looking for the minimal but looking for the uh, maximal uh, by updating updating your malicious point of XC. So uh, in this way, it, it turns out, okay, it works actually quite well. And it successfully also uh, by, uh, su also increased the uh, uh, error, increased the empirical error of the lasso function and by simply injecting one uh, malicious point in your uh, data set. And this is a gradient path we found, uh, randomly pick a, pick a point and uh, simply let the, the point to follow the gradient path and then this point will go to the boundary of uh, your constraints which uh, will increase your classification error if you are trying to use lasso for classification. So, uh, so uh, that's um, for uh, to wrap up. I think uh, probably um, you are not expect uh, you are not expect this coming because you commented for deep uh, deep learning, but uh, I do really hope that uh, this can increase your curiosity. Uh, this can uh, increase uh, can somehow give you some alerts. Is when you uh, when you are uh, do machine learning when you are designing learning algorithms design system, please don't exp don't ex expect your algorithm too fancy. Your algorithms are full of spots which can be uh, can be explored by adversaries, by some bad guys out there. And also, uh, don't expect their adversaries too silly. Actually, they're as smart as you do. <laughs> and also, if you want to uh, do the security analysis of the machine learning, and usually the, the, the simple way is uh, you set up the objective. Now the object is what I want to object. I want to maximize something, and then you do the worst case study, and then you suddenly can find out okay my algorithm have some flaws. I have to protect against this kind of a threat. So uh, in a word, I think machine learning needs to be more robust and uh, there is no innocent data. Data are full of noises. Data are full of uh, adversary noises. There are also a lot of bad guys out there. So be careful. So when you are studying machine learning, don't stick to the how, how powerful your predict, predict model is. Also, uh, protect the model itself, protect the data itself. That's it. Thank you. Maybe to the, because of the time issue, we have to take maybe two questions. Yeah, please. Um, what percentage of malicious points did you use to attack the SVM? Like, how many? Uh, we usually we control it under uh, ten percent. Yeah. Does it mean that we can uh, simply protect ourselves from these attacks just by having a big enough data set? Because then ten percent would be too big, to, or so it wouldn't pay off for the attacker to change that many. Yeah. Um, the, in in our uh, experiments, we have we did we have only ten percent, but the ten percent is on, for example, eight eight hundred samples, and uh, in this way, we uh, use the uh, points and version of classifier to do their job on like two thousand samples. So uh, it shows that even okay, even a small sample, small sample size of a malicious point can uh, totally change your test errors for the future. Yeah.